Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Is the pre- elections according to halacha? Does the political process as we know of today of electing officials to represent the city and the government and make decisions for the people of that city, town, and nation contain any Torah or halachic power or discussion? What is the process according to Torah and halach in electing a leader of a city or of a country? Who gets to appoint and elect him? Does the Rav of the town have a say in the matter? And does halacha dictate who of the candidates I should vote for? So while many look at the political process as an ugly and dirty process filled of lying, cheating, flattery, broken promises, and just complete this taste, in truth, the political process has very important halachic and Torah-held status, and thereby carries with it a responsibility of the voters that they put into power people of the correct positions. In today's lesson, we will focus on the mandate given to elected officials according to Torah and Halacha, and how they are elected, what is the election process, and in a future lesson, we will discuss who the voters should vote for. Is there any preferred candidacy according to Halacha, or can one vote for whoever one wishes, for whoever one wants? So we find a number of sources in the Torah and in the Paiskim that recognize the power of elected officials to make decisions upon their governed body, their constituents, and they have ability to make takanis, decrees, laws that are legally and halachically binding onto the members of the city, even if some of the members of the city don't like it. So it was recorded in the Ramon Chayshin Mishpat, chapter 2, Allah 1, that the custom in all places that the Tuve Ha'ir, which are the elected officials, have the same power as the Bezdin Agado. And as the Sma explains, that they are considered like the Bezdin for the city. And as the Rashba in Chuvas Miyuchasas 279-280 writes, that every congregation has permission to make decrees and institutions for their city, just as the Sanhedrin can do for the entire Jewish people. And thus the elected officials have Allahic power to make takanas for the city. The Torah also gives these elected officials a long arm of power to counter crime, violence, and violations of Torah law in ways that they see necessary, even if it does not abide by the Torah's personal guidelines of punishment handed to Sanhedrin, as explained in the Ramon Chayshin Mishpat there, chapter 2, Allah 1. So therefore, all the general things that city managers and city officials at a municipality in a country decide and put into law are legally and halachically binding on, binding on all the constituents and all the people residing in that city in that land. And therefore, for example, they decide to give a fine for someone who is parking in the wrong area. They have the halachic right to do so. And it's not considered that they're stealing money from the fine citizen, as they have the Torah given right to make decisions upon the members of their city of their country. In halacha, the terminology used for these elected officials is shiva tuve ha'ir, or the seven of the best of the city, which basically were seven individuals who were elected to the position, and they were in charge of making all the decisions for the city based on a majority vote. In today's political system, municipalities and governments contain much more than just seven people, and therefore the term of shiva tuve ha'ir is not literal anymore in this time. Now that we've determined the Torah and halachic mandated power given to city officials that have been properly elected, let's discuss how the city leaders are elected. What's the election process? What's the nomination process? How do they get to the power, to the position of power that they can do all these things that the Torah gives them ability to do? So interestingly, The current democratic process followed today in all modern civilization, in which there is a vote by the people of the city, the people of the country, and majority vote wins. This is likewise the halachic process for elevating an individual to become a city leader and have the mandate to rule and make rules for the public. Whatever candidate receives majority of the votes from the city residents wins the position. So is recorded in a number of Rishonim and Achreinim and the Shulchan Aruch. We will now begin discussing these sources. First, we have the Gemara and Brachas 55a, which states, One may not appoint a community leader without discussing the matter with the community and obviously receiving their approval. 
And this the Gemara learns from Moshe with Betzalel. Betzalel was appointed by Hashem and by Moshe, and nonetheless he was asked to get permission and consent from the people. So we see that a community leader must be the people's appointee. It cannot be a position that was bought with money or appointed by some power-grabbing individuals, but it must come from majority of the city. So writes the Ramon Cheshemish for 163.1 that all matters that need to be decided by the city one is to have a vote by all the people who are allowed to, who are eligible to vote in the city and one is to follow the majority the Sman Cheshen Mishpa 2.9 explains that the seven Tuve which we discussed earlier are individuals who are elected by the congregation and not by the Bezdin and not by Rabbanim and not by anybody else but the Kahal and so records the Rashba in volume 1 Shuva 6.17 which is brought in the Rashdam in the Mishnah Bru in chapter 153, that the Shiva Tuve Ha'ir, the elected officials, are not necessarily the wisest or the richest, but they are whom the community appointed to rule over them. Chsam Seifer in Mishpat 19 and 21 quotes a very interesting response of the Maram, which was, of course, an early Rishay, who brings a Takana that was made in Germany and the surrounding lands, that no person be elected to any position unless majority of the congregation elects them. And one who transgresses this is in Cherim and his wine and bread is like that of a Gentile. Concludes the Chassam Sefer that this letter was signed by the Rashbam, Rabbi Dutam, the Raven, and 150 Rabbanim. And thus we find also... A, in the Tshuva the Marami Rottenberg and Hagos Maimonis and Hilchas Tfilah on the Rambam, that we must follow the majority. Based on all this, we can understand the ruling of the Chassam Sefer that in the event of irregularities in the election process, where there was voter fraud, voter bribery, or unfair intimidation of voters, then the outcome is halachically invalid, as the outcome does not truly represent the will of the city of residence. The case in question of the Chassam Sefer was that a certain Rav was running for the position of Rav of a city, and he had members, advocates of his candidacy, pay off voters in the city, literally give them money to vote for him. And the Chassam Sefer ruled that the entire election is invalid, as it was based on a bribe and not based on true confidence of the townspeople. With that said, it's understood that although rabbinical leaders are considered the Mara da Asra of their city and maintain certain powers over the city, they do not have a right to elect leaders on behalf of the city against the opinion of majority of the voters of their city. And the election must take place through the city residents and not from anybody else. Furthermore, even the Rav himself has to be elected by the majority of city residents for him to take the position, as we brought regarding the Tshuva of the Chassam Sefer who writes regarding Rabbanus, how can anyone be appointed to any position without receiving the approval of the majority of the congregation? And a Rav is no different. That not only can he not appoint someone against the majority of the congregation, but he himself can't be appointed against majority of the congregation. Nonetheless, the Rav or the city Bezdin does attain certain halachic power to decide invalidations in the election process and or of the candidates. And certain positions are given to a Rav to fill in in accordance to community custom. And a Rav is allowed to give guidelines to the city residents with regards to who are the preferred types of candidates and what is representing Torah values and the like. Nonetheless, the Rebbe advocated throughout the years the necessity for the people to make their decision and discourage the intervention of Jewish leaders of, or Rabbanim from taking sides or aligning with a single party or candidate. And thus, the Rebbe throughout all the years did not align himself with any single candidate, with exception to one year in 1989 due to mitigating circumstances. The Rebbe advocated that one is to vote for the most Torah observant party or candidate, but that is regardless of the party or candidate's personal sectorial affiliation. And therefore it's extremely important in elections for the rabbinical clergy to remain apolitical, which is something unfortunately that isn't done today and it causes tremendous destruction and machlekes and sinas chinam, which can all be seen when a specific candidacy suddenly becomes a milchemes kaidish. Instead of it being a matter of which the public should be able to choose of their own free will. Mir Tzashem, in the future lesson we will discuss who a push person should vote for should he vote at all what is the Tyre and Allahi perspective regarding this matter? Thank you for listening to ShulhanArcharal.com. Our free services of making Torah knowledge available to the public depends on donors like you. 
Please help us continue our work through making even a small contribution at shulhanarcharav.com under the daily Halakha dedication section or in the subscription page. Also, check out our online courses and many Sepharim available for purchase that will both enhance your Torah knowledge and help support our work.